As our societies develop, we've been using more and more fossil fuels. This results in the release of greenhouse gases like carbon dioxide into our atmosphere. Unfortunately, this causes the temperature of our planet to rise. There are many ways we can reduce the emission of greenhouse gases. For instance, generating electricity with wind turbines. Now, many students are familiar with how a wind turbine works, but in this practical, they can delve behind the scenes and understand the designs behind them. Charlie, lovely to meet you. So what experiment have you got set up here? Today we're taking part in the wind turbine challenge where pupils have to design and make their own wind turbine. The challenge is that they have to lift a cup of weight or pennies from the floor all the way to the table using their wind turbine and we'll be using a hair dryer to sort of mimic the wind. So what equipment do you need for this? So for actually making the wind turbines itself, um, we need large paper. You can use newspaper instead, which is obviously better for the environment. Um, and with this, we have a large piece of dowel that we make paper straws with. Do you make these um, before the students come, or do they make them themselves? No, they make them themselves. You can buy them pre-made, but we find it adds to the challenge of it a bit for them. We've got things like masking tape to secure the paper straws, basic equipment that all pupils should have, so like your pencil, pen, yes. ruler, sharpener, things like that. We do use hot glue, um, so a hot glue gun. Again, you wouldn't have to use this. Obviously, it's optional. You could just use masking tape. Um, we've got our cutting mats as well, so we do give them scissors, but if it was a key stage four, I'd probably give them craft knives and things like that to develop those skills. String, ideally about two metres. It depends how high your desks are. Um, we've got some cotton reels as well because we found them quite useful. Um, collecting the string, smaller piece of the dowel, Paper straws, again, you don't need both of those. It could be either all and things like toothpicks. And yeah. <laughs> anything <laughs> that can sort of join together easily oh. with hot glue or masking tape. Um, so you can use different variations. You don't have to have all of it. So that's the making. In terms of the testing, we do G-clamp it to the table. Um, we use the hairdryer for actually mimicking the wind yes. and then we've got these little weights but you could also use sort of one or two peas as well okay yes so have you got any helpful hints about this experiment uh, things that you've learned from the past yeah so i think the biggest thing is is demoing how to make the paper straws that's a big one because they all tend to get the dowel stuck in the paper because <laughs> they don't pull it out as they go so that's one of the things and they do struggle with it a bit um making those paper straws um, another thing is I found that the cotton reels really help them to succeed because sometimes we've done it previously without the cotton reels and they've been trying to make sort of um, little circles or tunnels for their straws to go through oh, I see. and that's not always been as successful so I'd say the cotton reels have really helped us out this time round. You mentioned a glue gun there and things like mm. that. What are the health and safety issues of doing this? So. I always demonstrate the hot glue gun because obviously they can, not only can they burn themselves on the actual glue gun itself but also on the glue so we always do a demo of that health and safety and try and keep it on the cutting mat as well so we don't get hot glue everywhere. If you did obviously choose to use craft knives and a cutting mat you'd want your safety metal rulers as well um, just to make sure they're not near their fingers and things like that um, but that's obviously an added option. And so what are the takeaways that they can get from a challenge or an experiment like this? So the biggest thing is it is a challenge. They don't all get it right and some of them will have really good aspects of their designs um, but they won't fully function or they might not lift weight, they might just lift the cup and some might not lift the cup the whole way. So it's all about designing for me um, and they should all come up with a different solution. No one in here should have the same wind turbine. Um, the idea is that they are shown inspiration images. We talk about local wind turbines and what they've actually seen. And basically, I set the challenge. I tell them what materials they've got and sort of the success criteria about raising the cup. And then it's over to them to do it in their groups to problem solve and sort of develop their ideas, trial things. It might not always work, but that's the point of it. We're not always successful first time and it's getting that through to them. So if you want to do a quick design sketch on your piece of paper first, that's fine, and then let's get building. If we have a strong structure, it'll hold more weight, so it won't topple over. We're going to use the bobbin to wind up the string. I think we should use the paper straws to make like the base of it. So keep your fingers where the dowel is, okay, and keep rolling. 
then when the dowel's going to be hidden, pull it out slightly. Thanks, Lynn. Oh, there you go. Gratuitous use of glue gun. It's got to be done. <laughs> I'm going to make a square for the base because like, then it'd be like it strong enough. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So think about the shape of your propellers. Making a funnel because the funnel catches the air so it can catch the air and then turn the windmill to pull the cup up. Now are you thinking about the direction that your, um, your fins are pointing in? Yeah. yeah, we're hoping that if they're like a bit... Um, slanted then it will hit it and keep going <laughs> you've got a structure and you've got the fins what do you, how did you decide on the shape of the fins with the air resistance it can just catch it okay. so i thought if we curve the paper it'll catch it more easily. Okay, because I like that, because it's like, um, it's almost as if it's like cupping cup. round. Yes. Yeah. And so you hope for each one, it yeah. will sort of grab that and get it spinning. You could stick a straw in here, and then you could like twist. Because then it would, but then it, that would help, because then it can spin by itself. Exactly. Stuff. So it holds onto the straw, not onto that. Yeah. yeah. So when it blows, it will move like this. And when the thing's on the floor, We'll slowly wind it up. We've got one of these inside the straw. Oh, I see. So it's not just straw, because that's quite lightweight otherwise. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Um, we'll bring it up. OK, yes. Do, do you think it's going to do it? Uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> probably. I have confidence in the design. <laughs> We've had to change the straw quite a few times. What we're now going to do is start testing our wind turbines with our weights and hair dryer. So I'm going to ask one group at a time to come up and when you come up, you just bring your wind turbine and your G-clamp. Yep. Well. <laughs> Done. Yeah, that was pretty speedy. Yeah. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> It is, it's almost at the top. <laughs> so it's moving, but then it's catchy, isn't it? Pretty quick. Yeah, yeah, that was quick. And yeah. it, you were uh, searching and then you found a good angle and then it just sort of kept on going then. <laughs> Has anyone got anything they think they would improve if they were going to do this again? Or if you had 10, 15 minutes uh, to improve your wind turbine, what would you focus on? I would improve on uh, the way that it collected the string because it slipped off the barrel. I would make the sides more, I would put an extra piece of paper on the side so it would like basically funnel into the barrel so it would collect it rather than slipping off the side. A sort of a Mark 1 finger helps, but it'd be nice to design something in there. <laughs> um, I think I would change the way that they were connected um, with this barrel and that one, because our one didn't spin sometimes because it just was too loose, so it just didn't spin round, so the string wasn't collecting at all. Has this given you insight into sort of the challenges that people face um, to making things like that? Um, have you got any takeaways from that? If you're outside and you're starting to build it, you can't really just decide that you want to change something. <laughs> you have to kind of stick to the plan like you made. Otherwise, I don't think it would work very well. With this challenge, the kids make a wind turbine. They try and lift up sort of the pennies off the ground. Is there anything else? that they, Can they take it any further, an extension to this? Absolutely. So they could calculate the power we could time how long it takes for the wind turbine to collect all the string as well. So a bit of a challenge of whose is the quickest. Mm -hmm. um, we'd also do things like an evaluation um, so pupils could reflect on what they've done and how they'd improve it in the future. Um, we also look at the shapes of the wind turbines, actually propellers, um, which obviously links to other subjects like um, chemistry and physics. Um, so we're trying to interweave it all into DT. Um, so we take the theory and put it into sort of a practical. But yeah, it makes it a very powerful thing. Yes, you hear about it, you do it, and you can take it away. It, it stays in the brain a lot longer, I think, that mm. way. Absolutely. Yeah. 
Now, this is sort of one experiment, and, and the fact they're actually making wind turbines just seems really exciting. But can you use that then for other things to sort of take it further? Yeah, so we actually cover it over a period of lessons where to start with they're looking at forces, and we talk a lot about science and how they've covered forces in science and how forces come into play in our everyday life. So we literally look around the classroom and say, right, when we're sat on a chair, what forces are coming into play? And then we develop it from there. So we look at bridges, we look at triangulation, um, and then we slowly get on to wind turbines because it is the most challenging one, I would say, to actually make. This, this experiment itself, but I guess that leads on to a range of other things and leading on to other topics. A lot of the theory behind this project is covered in science. So about energy generation, about energy storage is covered in science. In DT, we obviously look at your... Um, different ways of generating energy. So we look at wind turbines, we look at solar panels, we look at fossil fuels, and we discuss the benefits and obviously negatives of these on our environment. We really push on getting pupils to understand the difference between renewable and non-renewable energy generation. And it's great that they've made a wind turbine and that they see them locally, but what do they actually do? And it's getting pupils to understand they generate electricity. This electricity can be powering their homes, it can be powering their school, lo local factories to actually manufacture products as well and understanding why we need to push for more renewable energy. Yeah, it's important. And I guess it's sort of seeing those things and bringing it to life in something they've made themselves. Yeah. It's really, really important. And things they actually see locally as well. Yes. Yeah. It's been wonderful being here today at the school with the students, watching them making their wind turbines. They were using creativity, they were using problem solving, they were working together as teams and just bringing all these things together. Each of the wind turbines was different, but they worked in different ways and they learned from each other. Being here with the students has been great for me and I think they've enjoyed it too. Practicals really bring these things to life.